with uh, the organizers to invite me. So I am actually not very far from Ghent because I am in Lille, so the French part of Flandre, so 74 kilometers. Uh, and I would like to speak about uh, the spectral analysis of uh, some Schrodinger operator with a periodic potential and a magnetic field. And this is a work which has been done in collaboration with uh, Horia Cornean and Radu Kurite. So uh, we have started this work a long time ago, so maybe five years ago, and uh, we, <coughs> we were uh, dealing with this uh, problem called uh, the pial substitution. And uh, I will start by a rather presenta uh, presentation in a rather physical style, and then I will come back to, to a more mathematical uh, presentation. So uh, the Piles uh, Onsaga substitution is used by physicists uh, to uh, study uh, non-interacting electrons submitted in a periodic potential. So this describes the lattice of atoms in the solid, and then you put uh, uh, an exterior magnetic field. So um, in the case where you have no magnetic field, so uh, you have the so-called per periodic Hamiltonian, uh, you have a periodic Hamiltonian, and uh, there is a usual uh, way to analyze the spectrum, which is called the Floquet uh, representation, and, uh, or block Floquet uh, representation, depending uh, on uh, the different physical schools. And uh, so you, you reduce the analysis, the spectral analysis to the, so in some sense you diagonalize the operator and you get a, a family of real functions, lambda n, which are, uh, which have some periodicity. And so uh, a fundamental domain uh, is called the Grillouin domain. And so essentially, uh, uh, what is said by the physicists is that uh, to understand the spectrum, uh, you, you start from this lambda n of theta, you replace this by the function x theta gives lambda n of theta minus a of x. Then if you want, uh, this is the Hamiltonian. Uh, and so in a more mathematical uh, language, this is the symbol of a pseudo differential operators acting on R2 because I will only speak about uh, <coughs> two-dimensional situation. So, uh, of course, this is very, uh, <coughs> very rough in the sense that uh, it does not analyze the way the different lambda n of theta are, are depending on theta. So you have, uh, you can have crossings uh, and all these situation have to be analyzed separately. And so, uh, when uh, trying to analyze this, we look to, we get a lot of uh, difficulties, uh, are the band crossing or not, and more uh, subtle uh, problems related to the topology of the, the eigenspace corresponding to the lambda n of theta. So you, you have fiber bundles and uh, the, the nature of these fiber bundles, are they are trivial or not, uh, could play an important role. So I, I, it's impossible in this talk to, to develop all the aspects of the question. And so I, I will only uh, give a limited uh, presentation to some of these aspects. Okay. So uh, in the previous work with uh, Oria Corne and, and Radu Puricce, we have analyzed a different situation. One was to analyze the, 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 what's going on at the bottom of the first lowest eigenvalue. And then we look at the spectrum uh, in a narrow window around the non-degenerate minimum of this uh, eigenvalue. Later on, we, we, we look at other situations, but uh, today uh, I will, I will con concentrate on the new aspect, which is to look at the situation where you have a so-called 
conical uh, crossing point. Hmm? And so essentially we have to show that uh, the analysis in this case can be reduced to the analysis of a two by two matrix value, which has the type of a Dirac operator. Now, uh, <coughs> to uh, present uh, the assumptions where we are working, uh, we have, uh, we will take a magnetic field, which has the form of uh, epsilon b naught, where b naught is constant. And then we add some, uh, some other uh, perturbation, which is measured by kappa. And so this is a, a non-constant perturbation. And so we, we want to analyze uh, how uh, this perturbation uh, is changing the, the spectrum that we can observe for this. Okay. So uh, now let's uh, give uh, more precise assumptions on the so-called periodic Hamiltonian. So before to, uh, to implement uh, our per magnetic perturbation. So uh, we can start already with some uh, operator with a periodic magnetic potential. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, because the Floquet theory is still valid when you, you consider the situation. So I consider uh, a Laplacian, a magnetic Laplacian, minus uh, delta A gamma, which has this form. And so AJ gamma is a smooth uh, magnetic potential. And V gamma is a periodic, uh, a periodic uh, electric potential. So, uh, so I put gamma, but so in, it's not very important here. You can think everywhere that gamma is Z2. Uh, everything can be ge generalized to more general uh, <coughs> lattice, uh, non-degenerate non, uh, non lattice. Okay. And then uh, there's a general theory, which is uh, rather old, but you can find it uh, present presentation in uh, in the fourth volume of Fried and Simon, is to uh, to use the so-called block Floquet-Zach uh, transformation, which uh, is defined here for at least for phi in S of R two, and then which extend as a unitary uh, map, and so you associate to uh, a function in S of R two, a function uh, you had you check gamma phi of x theta, which depends on x and theta, and that you look only uh, on a fundamental cell. So you have this uh, uh, periodicity uh, condition uh, properties that if you add an element in gamma to you hat gamma, so it's uh, periodic, so it's gamma periodic in alpha. And uh, on the dual variable theta, you have also a periodicity. So here I put Z2. You had gamma phi x theta plus nu. And so uh, this is the, uh, the way uh, you describe the, the image of check U gamma. And so uh, according to this, uh, to this property, you can reduce uh, uh, in the x variable, you can reduce to a two-dimensional torus, and for theta, you can also reduce to a square mm -hmm. after some normalization. So uh, we consider now that check Q index gamma uh, defines a unitary operator from L2 of R2 into L2 of T uh, O times L2 of Q. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, once you have performed this uh, transformation, you get simply uh, uh, the operator H gamma becomes a mu multiplication operator with uh, an operator valued function of theta. So you have a family of operator H hat of theta, which is a compact resolvent that you can uh, consider the so-called 
block eigenvalue or flo uh, flock a eigenvalue that we call lambda k of t. Hmm? So this, uh, this is the mathematical uh, presentation of what I said before in a, in a rather physical uh, language. Okay. So, but uh, so uh, in, in some sense, this is the, the spectral analysis of the of the periodic case, and so the spectrum. It's easy to see the spectrum is just the union uh, over uh, theta and over k of the lambda k of theta. So you have a, a description of the spectrum by bands. Hmm? Okay, now uh, I introduce uh, my uh, magnetic field. And finally, uh, the, hypothesis, the hypothesis that we take in this, uh, in this uh, analysis is, so now to add to the previous situation, uh, to consider uh, a magnetic field, which is the sum of epsilon B naught, B naught is constant, and uh, another perturbation for which we uh, we put kappa, but B is no more constant. So you, you have in some sense uh, two steps in the perturbation, a perturbation by a small uh, constant magnetic field, and then an, another perturbation by in some sense a smaller uh, magnetic field, but which has no assumption to be uh, constant. Okay, then uh, you define the various objects attached to this magnetic field. So at the level of the, the vector uh, potential, so A naught is the uh, magnetic potential corresponding to the constant magnetic field. So you can choose a gauge uh, in which uh, the magnetic potential has uh, this simple form. And then uh, you have the magnetic potential A epsilon kappa of X, which is uh, associated to the magnetic, uh, uh, okay, uh, you have A epsilon kappa. So here, epsilon A naught of X, which is this one. Then we have the perturbation for the magnetic field by kappa epsilon B of X, then I take uh, a of x corresponding to the magnetic field corresponding to b of x. Hmm? Okay. And then uh, here are the, the, the Hamiltonians I am considering. So uh, this is the standard magnetic uh, Laplacian here. This is the sum of the two terms. We are in R2 plus V gamma. And uh, we will uh, treat it as a perturbation of this one, so kappa, which corresponds to uh, kappa equal zero. Now, uh, the, for the formulation of the of main results, we have uh, the following assumptions. So we assume that in R, we have some interval i equal minus lambda minus lambda plus. So uh, we put zero in the inside the, this interval. And we assume that there exists some index k naught, which corresponds to, to the indexation of the eigen, uh, flow k eigenvalues. A point theta naught in q, q is the square minus one half plus one half square. And a compact neighborhood uh, in Q of theta naught, which is uh, diffeomorphic to, to a disk. And that's that we have uh, the following uh, uh, property that uh, first, the, uh, uh, the other eigenvalues, lambda K of t, uh, t star, uh, so the lambda K of theta for theta in T star, which are uh, corresponds to k different of k naught and k naught plus one don't meet uh, the interval e. So uh, we have a separation between uh, lambda k naught, lambda k naught plus one and the, re the remaining uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it remains to uh, describe what's going on for the, for the 
lambda k naught and lambda k naught plus one. And here we express that the two eigenvalues, so the eigenvalues are, are, are arranged in increasing order. We assume that there is a touching. Mm -hmm. And so lambda k naught of theta equal lambda k naught plus one of theta. And uh, inside Q, uh, there is only uh, one touching at theta equal theta. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it's periodic. So if you have a touching there, you, know, you have a touching uh, on any point where you, by translation, uh, over the gamma. Okay, so this is the first assumption. So this describes the, uh, the crossing of these two eigenvalues or touching, but uh, the crossing uh, type is uh, precise, made precise, uh, made the second assumption. So you look to lamb the product lambda minus of theta, lambda plus of theta. Mm -hmm. So this vanish at theta naught. And you assume that, uh, so this uh, function, which is uh, uh, according to the assumption, uh, the previous assumption, the product, which corresponds to a determinant uh, of uh, the reduction of the Hamiltonian to the, the, these two eigenvalues. So this is regular, and you assume that it has a non-degenerate maximum value equal to zero at theta. So this is the most uh, general, uh, generic assumption that you can do. Mm -hmm. In some sense, this means that lambda plus of theta or la and lambda minus of theta are given by plus or minus square root of theta minus theta naught, mm -hmm. a module of theta minus theta naught. Mm -hmm. So this is the typical uh, so-called conical uh, crossing point. Okay, another notation that we need, uh, another notion, is the notion of Hausdorff uh, uh, distance between two sets, because we want to, to define uh, the distance between two uh, different spectra. And so uh, this is the standard uh, definition uh, for the, this, the Hausdorff distance of two sets inside a, a metric space. Okay, and then uh, the main theorem is the following. So uh, under all the assumptions that I just described, uh, there is uh, a self-adjoint operator L acting on L2 of R, so 1D, with discrete spectrum. This, this spectrum, uh, the spectrum of this operator is, uh, <coughs> uh, so it's L2 of R with value in C2, but sigma of L is symmetric with respect to the origin. So lambda in the spectrum minus lambda is in the spectrum. Zero belongs to the spectrum. All the eigenvalues have multiplicity one. And then once you know the, the spectrum of this operator, you can uh, describe the localization of the spectrum of our model H epsilon kappa gamma in any interval of this type, minus L epsilon square, uh, so one half, L epsilon one half. Uh, and uh, the, dis the Osdor distance between the spectrum of the operator and the spectrum of the model operator, which is here, is controlled by constant times square root kappa epsilon plus epsilon. So as epsilon is small, uh, the distance uh, between the different points of sigma of L is, uh, is uh, in, in some interval minus L plus L is uh, bounded from below. And then uh, effectively what you, you see is that gaps in the spectrum of this operator are preserved by the perturbation. Mm -hmm. Because for kappa small enough and epsilon small enough, you, uh, the error is smaller. Hmm? So you keep gaps. And so this is the main uh, reason. Uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's only uh, satisfactory in some given L interval minus L epsilon one half, L epsilon one half. That is the epsilon small enough depends on L. Hmm? 
And so you, you just control uh, the perturbation in a rather small neighborhood of zero. Okay, so uh, actually there, is, there was a step which was already uh, done in a, in a paper by Oya Cornean and uh, Radu Purici in 2012, which uh, says that uh, you, if L is chosen uh, as before, uh, there exists a constant C such that when you compare uh, the spectrum of the operator for kappa different from zero to the spectrum for kappa equals zero, the error is controlled by C square root kappa of epsilon. So it's enough now to, uh, to concentrate our analysis to the case kappa equals zero. Hmm? So uh, there are various uh, difficulties in the proof. Uh, so in the previous uh, paper, we were analyzing what's going at the bottom of the spectrum. And so uh, in some of the perturbation argument, we were using the positivity of the, some positivity condition that we have lost here. Here we are analyzing a window in the middle of the spectrum. And so this is a first technical property. The, there are other, uh, <coughs> There are other points which are complicated, uh, uh, which uh, in the, when you are at the bottom, you can, uh, you can uh, in some sense, uh, what's called uh, filling the wells. It's easier than here where we are in the middle of the spectrum. And so we have to define an adaptive procedure in this case. And then there are the question relative to the, uh, to the, <coughs> the section of the, of the eigenspace uh, relative to the lambda k of theta. Uh, so there are uh, topological uh, aspects uh, which have to be solved. And, but uh, I will not insist too much on, on this aspect in my talk. Okay, uh, one of the, the tools uh, is uh, the so-called magnetic pseudo differential calculus. Uh, the, the idea is that when you have a magnetic field, uh, instead of, uh, of course, typically they take the, the magnetic field, uh, the Schrodinger operator with magnetic field. So essentially the symbol is psi minus A of X square plus V of X. Of course you can uh, associate a pseudo differential calculus to uh, the symbol psi minus a of x squared plus v of x. But it's better to uh, try to find, uh, to consider that the symbol is psi squared plus v of x and to find a way to, uh, uh, to quantize the effect of the magnetic field uh, by a different quantization, in the so-called. And so I just uh, have one slide on this, uh, but here, uh, here is the the general way you can, uh, I don't, is it okay? I repeat uh, the last sentence. So we want to find the quantization of a symbol. Here I take to start with a symbol in uh, uh, phi in S, but uh, after that you can extend it to, to more general class. And so uh, this term here, exponential minus i. So that is the, the circulation of the magnetic potential between y and x permits to quantize uh, the, the, eff the effect of the magnetic field. So if I forget this term, I have the usual vial quantization. And then this term, permits to take into account the effect of the magnetic field. So in this way, if you quantize uh, uh, the symbol psi square plus uh, V of X, you get the quantization of the Schrodinger operator with magnetic field. And then you have a corresponding uh, uh, law for the, uh, uh, you can uh, define 
the corresponding law for the, the symbols and the, this corresponding law uh, depends not of the choice of the magnetic field, but depends only on the magnetic field itself. So this is a, a nice way to, uh, to uh, analyze problem with magnetic field. So uh, I will not uh, continue in this way. Uh, and I will focus on one aspect of the proof where uh, two pseudo differential calculus are involved a global pseudo differential calculus and semi classical one. And uh, this corresponds to the semi classical analysis of two by two systems. And uh, mainly uh, this analysis appears in papers uh, with, uh, that I wrote with Justin in the 90s for the analysis of the Harper's model. So uh, essentially, you, you have a family of two by two matrices <coughs> and uh, where uh, you have a expansion symmetry to get uh, semi, uh, the self-adjoint property. And we assume for normalization uh, that A000 zero, zero, zero equals zero. And then the, uh, the, the aim is to analyze the spectrum of this operator in small interval around zero of the size minus CH one half, CH one half. And so uh, in comparison with the, the case where we were looking at the bottom of the spectrum of an operator, here we are at a crossing point situation and we have to linearize the operator and look to the linearization of this operator. So this is the model. And uh, the assumption that we have done on the non-degeneracy of the crossing can be interpreted in terms of the the determinant of this uh, symbol. Mm -hmm. So everything is linear here. And then, uh, of course, for our problem, we have to analyze the periodic case, so the second case, but as an intermediate step, we have to uh, analyze the case where there is only one crossing in R2 and uh, the only crossing being at zero, zero. So the model uh, which was uh, appearing in Harper's was typically this one, sine x, sine psi, sine psi minus sine x. And, but uh, the techniques uh, we have developed at this time were uh, assuming uh, other properties that we don't have in, in general. So, and uh, unfortunately or fortunately, so for the model in, uh, in this paper on Harper, we, were, uh, we have much more uh, properties, and so we can uh, proceed a little differently as here, and that uh, we get also a much deeper result uh, under this uh, strong assumption. And so uh, now we analyze this linear as operator. So how much time do I have now? How much time? Do... Yes, uh, two, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. So, uh, so the first thing is to analyze the linear operator, and this is done using global uh, theory of global uh, uh, pseudo differential operator. So, isotropic class, which uh, appear uh, in so in um, my papers with Didier Robert, or which also were uh, introduced by Shubin. So it was already mentioned in this country, and then. Uh, so what you get in, by this theory is a good characterization of the domain, the fact that the eigenfunctions are in S. So a more specific analysis, uh, independent of this, shows that the eigenvalues have multiplicity one, and you have symmetry of the spectrum. Then uh, you can, to prove that zero is in the spectrum, you can uh, first reduce the, uh, by a canonical transformation to the case where the determinant is uh, xi square minus xi square plus x square, and then you can construct explicitly uh, an eigenfunction with zero eigenvalue. Uh, and then uh, you can also construct quasi modes using uh, as first term the linear approximation, and then you can expand. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, you have to construct uh, the resonance for eigenvalues close to uh, zero. And here you have to mix the standard semi-classical calculus 
with this globally isotropic global pseudo differential calculus. So you have to, to combine these two. So it's, it's done in a rather general uh, calculus, uh, say uh, the, the Bill's calculus or the Hermann calculus. Okay, so then uh, the to, so this was the so-called one crossing uh, case. To go to the periodic case here, we can follow what was done in my paper with uh, just from uh, where uh, this part was uh, developed. Of course, I, I'm hit, uh, I don't explain exactly the way you feel. Uh, you, you go from one, from one uh, crossing point case to this periodic case. There is a technique of destruction of the crossing uh, to have a, a, this a kind of model that uh, I have no time to describe. Okay, and then uh, that's all. Uh, thank you. Okay, Professor Helfer, uh, thank you very much for your very nice talk and very nice presentation also. And then we are open to uh, for, for questions. Any, uh, someone has a question? Okay, maybe I would like to ask a question if I may. Yes. Um, could you go back more or less to the beginning where you had this, um, these discretized um, shifts and uh, frequency shifts? Uh, so, uh, which page? Uh, it was rather at the beginning, I would say. This operator, you, you check or you, ah, you, you check had. them out, yeah. So, I suppose this is some sort of um, a projective representation of a discrete Heisenberg group, I guess, right? So, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if it's uh, in this language. <laughs> no, okay, I think, I think it, it is it's something very, like that. It's, when much, you, when you... it's much shorter than that. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay, I see, yeah. I mean, I somehow it uh, reminds me of things which are mm -hmm. from representation theory. Uh, but uh, may I ask you, so this operator, how does it, enter the proofs in the end does it end by uh, does it act does it enter sorry by some sort of um, um, okay, transform so, or something like that so of course uh, i have not developed all the steps so but uh, but if you, the first step is to understand what is the spectrum when there are no magnetic field mm -hmm. and so uh, this with this transformation you 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 describe clear uh, the spectrum hmm? because you you get eigenvalues lambda n of theta and looking at the range of these eigenvalues you get the spectrum hmm? then there are other aspects that i have not developed uh, about the uh, around the construction of the so-called vanier uh, basis mm -hmm. that's so uh, i cannot explain this in uh, Okay, no, that's yeah. fine. Uh, then I'll just have a look into the paper. I'm just curious. So, uh, I just choose a few tools appearing in the proof, but... Uh, I okay, no, no, but that's fine. Thank you. 30 minutes. And, and, may, and uh, may I ask another question, maybe? So, um, yes. how, how, I mean, what can you say about the eigenfunctions of these um, Hamiltonians with magnetic potentials? I mean, are they, are they explicitly known in some uh, special cases? I'm very uh, innocent. I mean, it's I don't know anything it's extremely, about that. It's extremely complicated. <laughs> if you take already the, the case with com, you take a gamma equals zero, and you take the constant magnetic field. Hmm? Then the, the nature of the spectrum is already extremely complicated and depend of, of the properties be, is be not rational, irrational and so on. And so you, all the, all the description of the spectrum and the, for example, in the case of the Harper's model shows that it's extremely complicated. So in some sense, the result I present is, is rough. It shows, so inside, when you have the bounds and you introduce this small magnetic field, so the, uh, around this band, everything is terribly complicated. Mm? Mm -hmm. And so what I just described is that gaps, the gaps are remaining, but it's already a singular perturbation. Mm? Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not trivial. Mm? Okay. It's not, mm? Well, but I just described the gaps. Mm? I just say uh, it, it is enough to look uh, 
to a, a close neighborhood of what I get uh, without the perturbation. Uh, but uh, I don't, I don't give any details about the nature of the spectrum. Well, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have, I have one question by myself. Uh, it's about. Um, in, in in the simple in, in the simple case where, where you have uh, one the constant magnetic field yes, yes. It, uh, uh, are necessary this uh, this uh, hypothesis h1 and, uh, and h2 is h1 let's see uh, if you don't have the perturbation uh, part of h1 uh, yes h1 uh, ah in the case of constant magnetic fields Yes, in the case yes, of it's, it's already it's already okay. Okay, so uh, if if I refer to this old paper with uh, Johannes Jason about the Harper's model, uh, when the flux uh, of the constant magnetic field is close to one half, uh -huh. uh, then we get this kind of situation, and we can verify that this kind of assumption is satisfied. Mm? in the middle okay. of the spectrum. So this is an assumption which is rather generic. Hmm? The, okay. if you the, uh, crossing. Hmm? It's like if you look at the minimum, uh, you, when you say that the minimum is non-degenerate, is the, the, most, the most generic situation. But okay. uh, no, you cannot avoid this kind of assumption. Hmm? But this okay. is the most natural one. Hmm? Okay. You have a recent, there are many contrib a recent contribution about the so-called graphene model. <laughs> and uh, okay. you, you meet uh, this, uh, this kind of assumptions there also. Mm 